Calling for the vote. All those in favor of my motion to raise the militia say aye. 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 Opposed, no. <laughs> the, actual, the actual vote that day was 65 in favor and 60 against. In the beginning of our war, Great Britain, less than 4% of the colonists supported it. At the height of the war, only 25%. A full one-third to a half gave material aid and comfort to the enemy by enlisting in his army, feeding him, clothing him, housing him, and spying on us. And the rest changed sides depending on what was happening, didn't really seem to care what was going on. And I submit to you, things have not changed that much in your country. <laughs> but we win this war through God's help. I had another 15 minutes, I could prove that to you. But I want to talk about the Bill of Rights, since that's the event you're having this evening. I want to tell you the story behind the story of the Bill of Rights. Things are going along pretty well. We've won this war. What was the name of the document that was serving our nation at this time? The Federation. Well, Alec Kerr Hamilton and James Madison wanted to call a special meeting of the Continental Congress. And when I heard who was wanted it, I said at the time, I smell a rat. I didn't go because I was governor of Virginia, but I, my dying day, I wish that I had. This convention was supposed to just modify the Articles of Confederation. Instead, they closed the doors at secret meetings. Rhode Island didn't even send any delegates to the convention. Twelve delegates leave towards the end, but they passed this document, and now it comes around to the colonies for ratification. Now, I spoke a total of four and a half hours against the ratifying the Constitution, and I am prepared to do that this evening. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not kidding. But I've only got about six or seven minutes left. So I've condensed. See if you think my fears and others. We were poor. Richard Henry Lee, Thomas Jefferson, George Mason, and myself. In fact, when it, when it came around for ratification, initially, two uh, colonies did not ratify the Constitution. We come to Virginia, and I, at the end, I have the last word as usual, speaking against this motion of adopting the Constitution. And these are my concerns. You see if they have any validity today. It is said that this new document has wonderful features, but when I look at them, sir, it appears to me to squint towards a monarchy, and does not that raise indignation and fear the breast of every true American? Your president may easily become king. If he be a man of ambition, he may seize the first auspicious moment to accomplish his design. And who will stop him? He has the power of the purse in one hand. He has the power of the sword of the other. It would be madness. So away with your president. You shall have a king. And your senate, they can inject treaties which are injurious to your health, and they cannot be held accountable. But then we are told that those who have been elected to serve us would never do anything not in our best interest. <laughs> <laughs> Under this new set of legislation, you are now going to have two sets of tax gatherers. On the local level, these sheriffs, blood-sucking sheriffs, are taking your monies and commissions and fees. If, under the watchful eye of our state legislature, these horrendous acts are occurring, how are we going to keep our eyes on another set of tax gatherers in Philadelphia? Are with this new legislation that tax people come into your homes, measure and meet out and tax your substance? Where in this new form of government is your check on the judiciary? In our present form of government, we have checks and balances on all three branches. If you don't put a check on your judiciary, I predict you will one day live under judicial tyranny. <laughs> Where is your right to freedom of religion? Your right to civil trial. But my biggest concern about this new form of government is your right to bear arms. Your muskets, with where you could defend yourself, 
will be in the hands of Congress, who may or may not decide to argue. I predict if this measure passes, there will not be one must left in the state of Virginia. You read of a riot act in a country which is considered one of the freest in the world, but yet for its citizens fear to gather in large numbers because of being shot by a hard soldier. You may one day see that act in America. It has been said that eight colonies have approved this document. I don't care if all of them had. I would resist with manly firmness. And I only hope that you learn of the danger of this document, not by experience, but by a far more evil advocate than I. Now, the first vote is to adopt the Constitution with amendments. Mason and I came up with only 42 amendments to the Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> Madison votes against this motion. And it fails. Now the voters to adopt the Constitution without any amendments. Madison votes in favor of it, and it passes 89-7. Now, how did you get your Bill of Rights? It was a political. And perhaps the first political promise ever made and kept, Senator Pierce the exception. <laughs> Madison came to us and said, what can we do to get your support? I said, well, Madison, we don't agree with anything you've done here, but we believe you'd be a man of your word. If you will take our 42 amendments to Congress and do your best to get them through, we will support you. And to Madison's credit, he did this. But don't give James Madison credit for the Bill of Rights. It's like giving the water boy credit for the Super Bowl victory. <laughs> by, the, by the time Madison got back to Congress, there were 109 amendments proposed to the Constitution. Pair down to 17, the committee, 12 got submitted, 10 got ratified. One aside on your Second Amendment. The fact that your Second Amendment happens to come from a very interesting person, whether you're a Christian or not, you're going to get Jesus Christ credit for it. What was the, what was the weapon during Jesus' time? Sword. The sword. The very last thing Jesus Christ says to the disciples of Gethsemane is this. When I sent you out into the world, did you lack for anything? No, Lord, trust me. But let he who has a purse and also a bag, let him take it along. And let he who has a sword, let him sell his purse and buy it. There's your second amendment. So my question to you tonight is pretty obvious. What type of government do you think would be under right now if you didn't have it?